Hey, Seth David here with another spectacular screencast over here at SethDavid.com. If you're new to this and you haven't checked out my Accounting for Startups content, just come over here to News and look under Industry and you'll see Startups. And I've been working on a series here on Accounting for Startups. Uh, where I'm showing you how if you're bootstrapping, if you've got no budget to, say, pay for QuickBooks Online, which is what I recommend you do, uh, then here's how you can set up your accounting for fun and for free. And it is kind of fun, actually. Using Google Sheets, which costs you nothing. That's the beauty of this, is everything I've shown you in this series so far, up until and including today's segment, is absolutely free. So if you're a startup on a shoestring budget, this is the way to go. And if you follow along with these videos, you'll find it's very easy to create a system for keeping track of your accounting until you reach a point where you've either got that VC funding or you've got uh, revenue coming in sufficient to cover your QuickBooks Online subscription. Now, here's what we've been creating. We've been creating this template, and up until now, I showed you how to start off just kind of sketching out your expenses to get a sense of what you need. We built a little business model showing you know, what your monthly expenses might look like, um, and then we built a schedule based on that, assuming we had to hire and pay a bunch of software developers, and then I created a template for how you can sort of spec out any expense line item on your business model. Uh, and then we started creating a register, and this is where we captured the actual expenses, and I showed you some examples of how to record transactions. What I've done in between recordings is I took actually sample data from a QuickBooks desktop file, and I dropped it in here and tweaked it a little bit to make it conform to this template. So now I want to show you how to use this information with information populated in here to create reports. So what I did is I went ahead of time, I went ahead ahead of time, and I created a report, and this is based on a pivot table. And don't worry, I'm going to show you how to create this. But first, I want to kind of reverse engineer this, show you what it looks like. Now, you have this split here because this is from QuickBooks. So there are some transactions that I, that I exported that have a split, which means they have uh, multiple line items that they're going to. So I write a check out of the bank account, and I split it up between uh, a number of different types of expenses. Let's say I go to Staples, and I spend some money on a printer and other money on actual office supplies. Well, the printer printer portion goes to the printer equipment or computer equipment category and the office supplies goes to the office supplies expense. So that's what a split means. And what I did was I took this pivot table and created it based on this register and everything we've created up until now finally plays in. So what I did further was I noticed we have the category here and then we have the category types. So what I did down here on my filters was I added a filter based on the expense. So I only wanted to show the uh, account type or category type of expense. So that kind of limits it. If I remove that filter, I'll show you what that looks like. Now I've got all this stuff in here, all this other stuff in here, like payments to accounts payable and accounts receivable, right? So the way I did that was I added the field and I said, let's base it on category type. And then it's showing all items. So I clear it. And I say, only show me expense. And when I click OK, it updates this report instantly. Now, again, I could get some further insights into what are in these splits by actually adding another dimension to this. So notice what I have here is I have the categories in the rows, right? And the columns are based on the months, and they're subtotaled within each year. So I have 2016, January, all the way over to the right through December. And there's 2016 total. I don't have anything... Uh, in any other years at this point based on what I've filtered the data on. So if I if you want to see what it looks like when there's another year in here, I'll add in the equity because the equity has a $200,000 contribution in 2015. So you see how instantly when I checked off that second item and said, okay, let's include the equity too. Now it added in this open balance equity, which was that $200,000 deposit that was recorded to open up to start the business with. So if you're a startup and you got your VC funding, that's kind of what this might look like. But when I'm just trying to analyze the expenses, I don't necessarily want to include that. So we're going to uncheck that and click OK. But now let's say I want to further subdivide these categories and see who was paid, right? Who were the people that were paid, uh, especially under the split, so I can get a little more uh, of a sense of where that money actually went, right? Here I have, you know, in January of 2016, over $7,000 that was spent. Who did I spend it with? So let's add a field in the rows, right? Remember, these are rows. So I want to actually subtotal each of these categories with the names underneath. So under rows, we're going to choose add field here. And I'm going to choose name. 
and it sticks it in underneath, and now you can see exactly what it does. So within each category, it gives me all the names and how much they were paid within each month. Now, one of the um, uh, differences between Google Sheets and Excel and how they handle pivot tables is in Excel, you could actually double click this number and you'll see a detail on what makes it up. Google Sheets doesn't offer that. Not yet, but they're constantly adding to this and making Google Sheets better and better. Um, so here's another way you could get at it though. So this is Duncan Fisher, right? So let's say I want to see all the payments that went to Duncan Fisher and I want to see them just for January. Well, that's where these filters come in. And these filters are these little arrows you see at top. You turn them on by choosing data and if they weren't already on, it would say turn on filter here. And it puts those arrows in place. So now I want to look at just that name. What was his name again? Duncan something? Duncan Fisher. So under name, we're going to click the drop down. I'm going to clear it. I'm going to start typing Duncan. Oops, you got to click in there. Duncan, there we are. Duncan Fisher and OK. And now I see all the Duncan Fisher stuff, right? These are paychecks, as you can see. The amount is way here to the right. And now I want to see just for January of 2016. So of course, what I can do is I can filter the year. And it's already only got 2016 in here. And we're going to clear the month and choose only January and click OK. And this is how I can quickly see and I can write a quick sum formula on that. Um, you got to be careful. Actually, you need what's called a subtotal, right? Nine comma. And then that way it only totals what's visible. Don't ask me why the nine. If you can do your research on the uh, subtotal formula syntax and find out. All I care about is the fact that it works when I do it. Um, so 2256.23, that should be what we have there. Sure enough, it is. So you can, between these two, between the filters and the pivot tables, you can get any kind of information that you want out of this. And when we're ready to clear it, we're just going to hit clear, select all, OK. And then if we had any other filters, we did on the name. So we can click that drop down and just select all. You don't even need to hit clear and click OK. And now you know you've got the whole thing back to normal with everything showing. So this is how you can actually create really powerful reports on this uh, using pivot tables. Now, how did I create this? Let me show you. It's really easy. It's so easy. I'm actually going to delete this whole worksheet. And we're going to come back over here into the register and we're going to go to um, data and we're going to go to pivot table. And it already works out the range that I want to use for that pivot table, right, based on what's here. So 339, let's just see if that's truly the bottom of this range. Because sometimes if you let it go past the actual bottom, or it includes this row where I put like my marker for where the end of the data is, then that'll show up in your pivot table results. So you might want to just update that row number here and make it 338 in a case like this. And now we have a blank report, but then like you saw, we start populating it and saying, well, what information do I want to see? Well, let's say that in the rows, I would like to see the category. Boom. Right, and let's say I don't want to. Um, uh, let's say I don't want to see the category. Let's say that I want to. Let's take this out. Let's say I just want to see the category type. So I want to see. I have asset, equity, expense, liability. Now down here, let's go to the values, and we'll add the amount. So now this is interesting stuff. It says I've I've put forty thousand into assets. I have one hundred ninety-five thousand in equity. That's because we put in two hundred thousand and probably took out five somewhere. Uh, and then I have expenses of 96,000 and I have liabilities um, of 39,000. So this gives me some interesting information. Uh, what I could now do is add the category underneath that, right? So this gets interesting, right? Because now I see, all right, here's what happened with all my asset accounts. Here's my equity, right? There's the owner's draw of 5,000, I told you. Here's my expenses. But now we want to see it monthly. Right, so that's what I had done before. I, in fact, this is a little different kind of report than what I showed you before, but might as well show you something different. So now we want to add some columns. I want to see the months. So that's why I put in, you might have been wondering from several videos back, why did I add it? Why do you add in those columns for the month and year? This is exactly why, so that I can do this in the pivot table. So I want the month in there, right? But now this, these months could be any year. I don't know what year they're in, right? And it's going to include anything that's marked with the month of January. So we're going to add one more field in the columns for the year. 
And then we're going to put the year. I want to drag the year over the month because I want it first by year and then within that by month. So now you could see more clearly I have stuff in 2015 from December, which is that owner's, bail, uh, owner's uh, equity contribution that we did. And then I can see where did we take out that 5000 Actually, it was two amounts of 2500 each, one in October and one in November. Could be more than two amounts. Could be several amounts in October that made up the 2500 right? Again, we can go back to the register and use the filters to sort of chisel down a little bit more on this information. Um, so, so this is how you can start to really chisel your report down and get really good, meaningful information out of it. Now, I said this in the write-up. I'm going to say this here, and I'm going to close with this, because then we're going to start getting into how to use QuickBooks Online for a startup. Um, this reporting, in my opinion, arguably, is more powerful. It may not look gorgeous. But it's more powerful than any reporting module in any accounting software that's out there. And I've used many. Um, and I say that only because of the flexibility, the ease with which I can do just what uh, the name pivot table suggests. I can pivot around on the data and organize it any way I want. No accounting software out there gives you that kind of flexibility. And anytime I've talked to the developers, and I have, I've had conversations with developers at Intuit. I've had conversations with developers at Zero, and at Sage and at... Um, Zoho, who's created Zoho Books. I've had conversations with developers at all these companies, major companies, major players in the accounting software industry, and they all explained to me that the infrastructure that's needed to create the ability to do pivot tables would cost millions to produce. That's why you don't have this. But wouldn't it be great if I could go into QuickBooks Online and say, here's what I want in my columns, here's what I want in my rows, I want it subtotaled based on the way I've laid it out. Right, And notice here I have the show totals option. If for some reason I don't want to see that line subtotaled, I can just uncheck that and it won't show me the totals. Not sure why you wouldn't want that there though. I think you'd want it there. But the, the, the choice is there, the flexibility is there to create pretty much whatever you can visualize based on the data that you have laid out. The key of course is building the source data correctly. And once you have that laid out, and that's why I created the month and the year, because I knew it would give me that ability to pivot on it this way. If I only had the full transaction date, I would have no way to break out the year and the month so that I would have no way of organizing it like this. And then we can go in and start adding filters. And let's say I want to filter the year and say, show me only 2016. Okay, 2015 is gone, right? So between organizing what goes in the columns and what goes in the rows and what information I want to filter on, it makes it really easy to, as I said, customize this to summarize the information any way that I can imagine. That's what I love about this. I almost like the idea of using this Google Sheet system better than accounting software, at least at the beginning, until your needs in terms of the day-to-day -day processing of information go beyond what you can really do efficiently here. Because that's what happens is at a certain point when you're processing a lot of transactions, it's too inefficient to come in here and maintain a register like this. So at a certain point, you're going to need and you're going to want to move on to the account accounting software like QuickBooks Online. And that's what we're going to start looking at in my next video on accounting for startups. As always, I hope you had some fun and learned something along the way. You know where to find me if you need me, right? Come over here to SethDavid.com or if you want some extra one-on-one -on -one help, just go to SchoolofAnswers.com and you can sign up for direct one-on-one -on -one training where I can log in remotely with you and give you the help that you need on this or any other stuff that you've seen me cover. Not sure if I can cover it? Then reach out to me via email, seth at nerdenterprises.com. Ask me your questions. I'll tell you no lies. If I can't help you with it, there's no point in me trying to tell you that I can. So I'll let you know if I can help you with it or not. If I can, then you can go sign up for a session. If I can't, I could probably refer you to somebody who can. So one way or the other, if you have questions, get in touch with me. Again, I hope you had some fun, learned something along the way. I hope you're having an absolutely fantastic day, and I look forward to seeing you on the web.